Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Dose. And as we start to draw closer to Gamescom, we're going to hear a lot of different things throughout the week. And it already sounds like something major is being teased that actually ties into something that was discovered last week. Yeah, it's been a long wait. But for fans of Final Fantasy on other platforms beyond just the PlayStation 5 for a change, I think I have some good news, and, and I'm going to explain why today and what I think could potentially happen at this year's Gamescom. Now, we also got an update for an upcoming PlayStation 5 first-party game, and I've already seen some questions regarding this announcement and what this possibly means for Sony's exclusive strategy going forward. So do make sure to stay tuned for all of that. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this type of content. I am here every Monday through Friday, but with that said, let's just go and jump right into things, starting off with... Concord. It's kind of hard to believe because nobody's really talking about this game, but Concord will be out next week on August 23rd, and technically, this is Sony's next quote unquote big exclusive. Whether big means successful, we'll, we'll see. But you know, they invested a lot of money into this game. They just released a limited edition controller. And I mean, they even outright acquired the studio that's been working on it. So if anything else, Sony seemingly has or had a lot of confidence in Concord. And that includes a strategic plan for more upcoming content. They just revealed its roadmap, and you can see it over here on August 23rd when it releases for $40. You'll be able to get 6 modes and 12 maps, and you'll also get 16 free gunners and 8 variants on day 1. As you would expect from a live service title, though, they do have more content staggered well past its launch, which includes Season 1 in October and Season 2 in January. They're even teasing a Season 3 for April 2025. And, you know, that's all nice to hear and everything, but, I mean, I still can't help but think, with all of the negative stigma that surrounds this game, I, I do have to almost kind of wonder, can this game even make it to Season 3? But, like, that's kind of sad to say. I, I, I understand, because, you know, it's not even out yet. Maybe it'll come out and really surprise us. Who knows? But there's just been so many red flags when it comes to this game. Fans just don't seem interested in it at all. And even this very announcement on Twitter has been bombarded by people who are just frustrated by its existence. So I, I think by this point there is a legitimate question on whether this game can even have success to sustain a live service title. Live service games aren't exactly cheap to maintain, and if they can't gather a community, then you know it's really hard to say how Sony will handle that. I mean, ultimately, we'll see what happens next week when it releases. Maybe it will be a bigger hit than what we all expect. Who knows? But there you go. A Concord roadmap. Now, also, Sega just announced a new game as a part of their two-point franchise. We've already been able to manage a hospital and a college, but now, this time, you'll be managing a museum in Two Point Museum. I believe this is probably the unannounced game that Sega was previously teasing for Gamescom, so we'll probably see a lot more about it there, but so far, we do have this trailer to go by, and in typical two-point fashion, it's comedic sense of humor is a focal point. I especially like their uh, primitive computer, uh, but, but you know, with all of these games, they're just so fun and charming, and hopefully Two Point Museum will continue that. The only thing is, is that we don't have a release date for the time being. All we currently know is that it's coming over to the PlayStation 5, to the Xbox series, and the PC, but interestingly, they've already given certain outlets some hands-on time, so by all means, you can read a number of first impressions, but I, I think that's also a pretty good sign that it's probably not too far out from its official release. So in the meantime, maybe go ahead and wishlist it, and if you haven't already played the first two games, they're actually on sale right now over on Steam where you can pick them up for just $6 a piece. Okay, so one of the biggest and most controversial ongoing stories this generation has been Sony and Square Enix's exclusive partnership for the Final Fantasy franchise. They managed to lock down the last three mainline titles, being 7 Remake, Rebirth, and Final Fantasy 16. Now, Remake eventually made its way over to PC, but the other two are still exclusively on the PlayStation 5. Now, personally, and I've talked about this before, but I'm not really against exclusive partnerships per se, when both parties can actually benefit. But I think in this case, I've always felt like this was a very one-sided relationship that favors Sony. In my opinion, Final Fantasy is just far too big of a franchise to only grow on a single platform. 
I just think that that is far too short-sighted at the detriment of Final Fantasy's long-term future. And also, just considering how expensive these games are to make now, it really is just best to support as many platforms as you possibly can. I, I think that's kind of the goal for most of these third-party publishers. So while Square probably got a nice bag of money for the short term, they have seemingly regretted that deal. Their new CEO has vowed to do away with a lot of the exclusive arms for hire mentality that they previously had. And I think over time, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, and Final Fantasy XVI will all be completely multi-platform. And I think at this year's Gamescom, we will get at least one part of that announcement, if not more. We'll come back to that in just a second. Now, the reason I say that, though, is because it's been spotted that a Final Fantasy 16 voice actor is teasing a Gamescom announcement over on Twitter. You can see here where he said, excited for Gamescom this year for absolutely no reason with the eyeball emoji. Now, technically, this might not be related to Final Fantasy 16 at all, but... There is a little bit more to this story that leads me to believe that, yes, there is an imminent announcement for Final Fantasy 16. Just last week, Final Fantasy 16 was actually spotted in a game-ready driver profile in an NVIDIA update. So, based on that information, it does kind of seem like things are being prepared on the back end. And when you pair that information with what we have today, then everything just kind of clicks in place. A Gamescom announcement very well could actually be looming, or at least over on PC. And, and I think that's the number one question right now. We, of course, already knew that a PC version was going to happen eventually. That's always been a matter of when. But a lot of people still want to know, is there a chance that it'll also get an announcement for Xbox? And I think by this point, there has been a lot of smoke that an Xbox version is in their plans. But whether Square Enix actually makes that officially known the same day that they announced the PC version, that part remains a mystery. What we currently know, though, is what Square Enix told us themselves. This makes things pretty clear, but back in the March, in an interview with Noisy Pixel, the Final Fantasy 16 producer said this about his team. It's not over in a sense that we have the PC version. Once the PC version is released, we're thinking about hopefully moving to other platforms as well. However, that's not really talking about the story. It's more about moving it onto different platforms. So, yeah, I don't really think that this is a simple rumor by this point. Square Enix definitely seems to want this to happen. They want to port Final Fantasy 16 to more platforms. And there's also a lot of smoke that they want Rebirth and Remake on more platforms as well. And when you think about that, there's really only two more options. You know, you have the Nintendo Switch successor, and you have Xbox. Now, whether the Switch successor is capable or not, we'll have to wait and see, but we do know for a fact that Xbox absolutely is capable of running all three of these games. So I don't really think that it's a matter of if by this point, but rather a matter of when. It will take Square Enix some time to get these ports moved over. So what I'm gonna say about all this is that for right now, I'm fairly positive that we will get a PC announcement at this year's Gamescom with a release date. As for the Xbox version, maybe they'll kind of confirm an Xbox port is coming soon or something like that. But again, whether they'll actually announce both at the same time, it, it really is hard to say. But I absolutely do believe that an Xbox version will eventually come. I would really just kind of hope that this is a sign for what's to come in the future for the Final Fantasy series, though. You know, hopefully from this point forward, there'll be no more of these timed exclusive deals. Again, this is a series that deserves just so much more than that, and I think the Persona franchise is a perfect example of what I've been trying to say. You know, look at how much success Persona 5 has had since going multi-platform. That came out years after the PlayStation 4 version, but it had success on other platforms, and Sega still brags about that game in their financial reports. And I think, much like Persona, Final Fantasy would be much better off being everywhere. Day one. I think that's best for the games that they're currently making, and I think it's best for the future of Final Fantasy, as they can really grow that franchise across all platforms, rather than being strong on PlayStation and weak on the others. All right, now, one last thing before we go. We just got an update for a PlayStation 5 first-party game being the Until Dawn remake. They just confirmed it'll release on October 4th later this year for the PlayStation 5 and for PC. This will be one of their select games to release simultaneously across PlayStation and PC on day one. 
And, and I have seen a lot of questions about that. Some fans have already asked on whether or not this is a new strategy from Sony. You know, they previously told us not to expect day one PC games from them outside of their live service games. But here we are, and maybe that doesn't necessarily include remakes. Maybe remakes are on the table for day one PC releases as well. And, and even looking back at The Last of Us Part 1, that game also had a quick turnaround for PC. You know, they don't usually announce a PC version that soon, but in the case of both of these remakes, Sony has been upfront about their plans for a PC version from day one. So maybe they do view some of these remakes a little bit differently than what they would a brand new game, which I, I think makes sense. I think the Until Dawn remake has a much better chance of success by releasing on PC day one, where a lot of people still haven't played it. I mean, you really can't say the same thing about PlayStation because, for that matter, technically, you can still play the original Until Dawn on the PlayStation 5 through backwards compatibility. This is not a very old game. It released just last generation for the PlayStation 4. So maybe not everybody who played the original wants to upgrade to that remake. But on PC, this is a place where they can really sell it to a completely new audience. And the same could be said about The Last of Us Part 1 when it released on PC as well. So if this is their plan, I, I think this is a smart strategy by Sony. Either which way though, I mean, if you're excited about Until Dawn, mark your calendar for October 4th. Anyways though, that's going to be it for this episode, but until next time, go and hit that subscribe button and peace out.